Welcome everyone, my name's Sylph, and this is my attempt to beat a hardcore Nuzlocke of Pokemon Ruby with only normal type Pokemon. If you've seen my challenges before, you know the rules that we play by, but I'll put them up on the screen if you want to pause for a reminder. After doing a normal type hardcore Nuzlocke in Pearl, I realized how much fun normal types are to play with with their weird type interactions, and how challenging they are because they don't have any super effective same type attack bonus moves since normal isn't super effective against anything else. Looking for another gen to pursue a challenge with them, nothing stood out to me more than Gen 3, one of my favorite generations ever. Ruby and Sapphire offer a ton of potential normal type encounters for our run, but beyond that, what's really cool is that most of them are quite underrated or at least underused Pokemon, which, you guys know me by now, is really exciting in my opinion. While our rules make some of these encounters a little bit risky, the only one that is unobtainable here is Azuril, because it's only obtainable by breeding Meryl, which doesn't have the normal type. I don't know if we're going to be able to manage without Azuril, but hey, we'll give it a shot. Today's video is sponsored by our good friends at Raid Shadow Legends, a free-to-play game that, the more I play, the more I realized how much it just fits my gameplay style, with tons of strategy and really tough challenges. Yes, even for me. As Pokemon players, we're all used to tons of iconic characters to play with, and it's very rare for other games to match that depth. But Raid has over 600 amazing champions to play with, which is quite incredible. But I want to talk to you about something else for a minute. The bosses. Raid's got an insane variety of wicked bosses, including one of my favorites, Sylvania, guardian of the Spirit Keep. If I'm honest, I feel kinda bad about fighting her. Her family talked to spirits on behalf of the Queen, but the elves had a cultural renaissance and started getting rid of people that they didn't like, including her parents. She went into isolation afterwards and stopped sharing her magic, but we need those spirit potions, so we've gotta defeat her. She heals up to half her health every time she gets a turn, and she also deals bonus damage based on how much HP she has left. However, if you've got one or two champions that can keep a healing reduction debuff on her, you're better off, but she can also put up a block debuffs buff, so make sure to bring someone who can remove enemy buffs too. The strategy element of rage just blows me away and I can't get enough of it. Every now and then I'll lose to a tough enemy and re-strategizing, upgrading my champions, and figuring out how I can beat them is such a fun and rewarding process. And I mean that literally. Seriously, there are a lot of rewards. Not only that, but there's also special events all the time, and a big update called the Guardian Ring is coming this month for whole new ways to use and upgrade your champions. Click the link in the description or scan the QR code on screen to join in on the action and you'll get an epic hero, Chinoru, who's amazing in the Doom Tower, 200k silver, 1 XP boost, 1 energy refill, and 1 ancient shard so you can summon an awesome champion as soon as you're in game. You'll find your rewards here in your inbox for the next 30 days only, so I hope to see you soon in Teleria. Ah, uh, Pokemon Ruby. The first and hopefully last Pokemon game that starts with the main character being kidnapped in the back of a moving truck. As if things weren't bad enough, our mom pretends nothing happened and says, This is our new home! It has a quaint feel, but it seems to be an easy place to live, don't you think? Oh yeah, just fine, mom. Everything's great. Meanwhile, we have four concussions and a dislocated jaw. In the house, she then says, Dad bought you a new clock to mark our move here. Oh, cool. Wait, which one's my dad? In our bedroom, she then says, Everything is put away neatly. Neatly? My chair is facing the wrong way, my GameCube is on the floor, my bed's in the middle of the room, and there's an Among Us poster on the wall. I've never even played Among Us. So, come quickly, look, it's the Petalburg Gym. Maybe Dad will be on. Local man arrested for the murder of 14 of Petalburg's 30 residents. In Birch's lab, one of his assistants says he's on field work. Ergo, he isn't here. Quaint. Ergo, am I in the right time period? Why do all these people talk like this? While the professor is occupied with getting killed, I decide to steal one of his Pokemon and I choose Trico. This will cause Mei to pick Torchic, which eventually becomes a fighting type, so it should be the most challenging for us. Back at the lab, Birch says, The way you battled earlier, you pulled it off with a plum. A plum? Who? Okay, actually, who are these people? I nickname Trico Canelo and get the hell out of here. After Canelo KOs May, she begs for mercy and gives us some Pokeballs as a peace offering, meaning our challenge has officially begun. While setting out on our journey, our mom stops us and says, Oh, you got a Pokemon. You're your father's child, all right. You mean the murderer? Nice. It's time to grab our first encounter, and I go up to Route 103 to get it so that we're not stuck with a level 2, which can be impossible to grind, and if we lose it, we lose the run. And thankfully we find a level 4 Zigzagoon. 
I catch it and nickname it Videl, and Videl has a lax nature which increases its defense but decreases its special defense. That'll work I guess, at least most fighting moves are physical. With that, we have to say goodbye to Mr. Canelo, you were an absolute legend my friend. I'll never forget that time we walked up Route 101 and back. Yup, good times. Alright, it's time to get serious. I head to Route 102 to EV train Videl on Zigzagoons and Puchina, which give speed and attack EVs respectively. I exclusively grind against level 2 so that we can take out as many as possible without getting too high on levels since we do have the level cap after all. I'm able to get about 30 EVs before it's time to move on. On our very first trainer battle we actually got a crit on our first turn and one hit KO'd in. Hopefully that's a good omen for the run. After arriving in Petalburg City, we encountered the murderer himself, our real father, not Daddy Machoke, and he gives Wally a Zigzagoon. Great, now all three of us have Zigzagoons. What the hell is going on? Moving onward to Route 104, we can get a new encounter, a Talo. I catch it successfully and call it Hikui. Hikui ends up having a modest nature, plus special attack and minus attack. Why? Terrible, but at least it gives us some crucial flying coverage against fighting types, which are trouble for us. The next location for an encounter is actually the Petalburg Woods, where the first Pokemon I find is a Slackoth, amazing since it's only a 5% chance here, and I also catch it on the first ball. I nickname it Chi Chi, and she ends up having a gentle nature, plus special defense and minus defense, which is meh. In the berry shop, this girl says, If you don't pick berries for a while, they'll drop off onto the ground, but they'll sprout again. Isn't that awesome? It's like they have the will to live. I feel like there's amazing potential for an edgy joke here, but I'm not gonna do it. Upon arriving in Rustboro, this guy gives us the cut HM and says, No need to be modest or shy, go on, take it. Yeah, Videl, no need to be modest. Now while going ahead to Route 116 for our next encounter, I made a mistake. There's a 2% chance to find Skitty here, and while searching, I accidentally encountered a Wismer instead. I knew that Wismer appeared in Rusturf Tunnel right beside here, which I was going to go to next, but I forgot that it appeared here too. Since this is a new normal type encounter, as per our rules, this effectively cuts off Skitty as a viable encounter. Oof. I could have used a Repel to get to Rusturf Tunnel and then come back, but you live and you learn, I guess. While trying to catch this damn thing, it also crit Chi Chi down to literally 1 HP, but we eventually caught it. I nickname it Bulma, and she has an impish nature, plus defense and minus special attack, which is meh since it does get some good coverage moves eventually. All of this will be worth it though, as it evolves into one of my favorite Pokemon. After some grinding, it's time for the Rustboro City Gym, and yup, it's a Rock-type gym, absolutely terrifying for us as they resist all of our same type attack bonus or stab moves. As weird as it may seem, I actually lead with our Talo against the first trainer because thankfully he at least doesn't have any rock type moves and I use focus energy to increase our critical hit chances as that's the only way we're going to be able to do any damage. This allows us to KO the first one with just 7 HP remaining and thankfully the others are lower level so although it's a long process we can chip them both down for the win and thankfully no deaths. Skipping the second trainer, it's time for the first gym leader, Roxanne, an absolutely terrifying prospect for us. I theorycrafted for a long time here, trying to figure out a strategy, so let's see if we can make this happen. She leads with a Geodude, and I lead with Chi Chi. I use Yawn on the first turn to get it to sleep, as she hits us with Rock Tomb, which lowers our speed. Now don't forget that Slackoth has the Truant ability, which means we can only use a move once every two turns. Thankfully, she just goes for Defense Curl before falling asleep. Here, I switch into Videl, and my strategy is to start using Growl now to lower its attack. With the help of sleep, I'm able to get all six off with us being brought to half health now that its attack is lowered. I then switch back into Chi Chi for another Yawn, and while it's asleep, I can use Slackoth to restore our health. I switch into Bulma and start using Howl like crazy to raise our attack power, and after 6 we get to max power, only taking a third damage or so in the process. I start using Uproar from here, and it still does almost nothing. Uh oh. Our Orin Berry activates though, and from here it seems we're pretty much just hoping for a crit, but we don't get one after 5 attacks with us down to just 16 HP, and then Roxanne uses a potion. But then, our next one gets a crit, but it just barely doesn't KO on 1 HP, and then she uses another potion. Ultimately, Bulma brings her down to about a quarter, with us at only 4 HP. I'm forced to switch here, so I go into Chi Chi. After 5 turns, we bring it to just a sliver, and our Orinberry activates, and then I hit it with Yawn again to put it to sleep. This way, I can make sure to use Slack Off to get near full health before finally taking it out. In comes her second and last Pokemon, Nosepass. It just uses Harden 3 times as I put it to sleep. 
here, I can perform a similar strategy with Videl and Growl, although this time Bulma is too weak to send out and this thing's defense is way too damn high now. With the help of her Orenberry, Videl's able to get all six Growls off and then I switch into Chi Chi to put Nosepass to sleep again before finally switching into Hikui. Now, I know this looks crazy, sending out a flying type against a rock type, but Nosepass has gotten four defense curls off, and the only way to do any damage from here is to try and use focus energy to get crits, since they ignore stat changes even though they're resisted. In the end, Hikui is only able to get one crit off and do a bit more than third damage on it before being brought to just six HP. Yikes. It is an incredibly long grind from there, especially with Truin, but ultimately Chi Chi with her yawn and slack off strat using Scratch is able to take down the nose pass over time. This battle was absolutely insane. It took over 23 minutes, but we managed what I was thinking might be impossible. While talking to the president of the Devon Corporation, he brags about what a great president he is, and I'm like, yep, seems like an accurate representation of a president. We also catch a second Zigzagoon just for HMs, and yes, it's Mrs. HMs. She's married. Sorry, fellas. May wants to battle us on our way out of here, but nope, not happening. Hell no, to the no, no, no. While I'm trying to convince Mr. Bronny to take us on a year-long boat trip, I intercept him. Finally, finally, after years of chasing you, I got you, you bitch. Under some serious coercion, Briny brings us to Doofer Town, and here we can pick up one of the best items in the game for us, the Silk Scarf, to boost the power of normal moves by 10%. Apparently the trendy saying in this town is skill money. Skill money is the definition of what's in right now. You know, normally these phrases are gibberish, but this one actually makes a lot of sense. Skill money is the hottest thing in cool right now. Just look at Trisha Paytas. <laughs> In Granite Cave, we can pick up the Everstone, which is surprisingly going to be useful for us later on, and we encounter Steven at the end. Oh, now you give us the Steelwing TM. Would have been real helpful to have that like 15 minutes ago against Roxanne. The Doofer Gym is a fighting type gym, which you would think would be an absolute disaster for us, but we've got Hikui, so the gym trainers get smashed by Wing Attack. It's time for the second gym leader, Brawly. He leads with a Machop, and I lead with Hikui. Wing Attack does about two-thirds, and then he just uses Leer, so another does the job. In comes his final Pokémon, Makuhita, and with our defense lowered, I'm very nervous, but I know it has lower defense than Machop, but it still survives on less than a quarter, and then just goes for Bulk Up, so another KOs. Interesting. That was a surprisingly easy gym battle, but I'm not complaining. Leading to Slateport, we can grab the soft sand item to boost ground moves, and we encounter a girl who battles us with Azurils, which is a painful reminder of the Pokemon we just can't have. Hey, we can get an Azuril doll here though. Does that count? In the museum, we get the Thief TM, which is perfect for getting type boosting items off of wild Pokemon, and Maxi ends up attending our party and says, Why on earth do you feel compelled to mess up Team Magma's plans? Heh, <laughs> I see what you did there. On Route 110 comes something very useful for Watson's gym, a series of cherry berries to heal paralysis. Along the way through the trainers, Chi Chi ends up evolving into a beastly Vigoroth, which gets rid of its stupid truant ability, thank god. Up ahead, we have one of those infamous battles with Mei, and I'm seeing no way at all to beat her if I'm honest, especially with her Combuskin with Double Kick. Our level cap is 23 though, and Taylo evolves at level 22, so I decide to evolve it, realizing it probably won't be useful for an electric gym anyway. She leads with Whalmer, and I send out our newly evolved Hikui. Weirdly enough, she just went for Splash, so two wing attacks KO it. In comes her Shroomish next, and I hit it hard with wing attack for the super effective KO, and her dreams come to life as its effect spore ability poisons us, activating our guts ability which raises our attack if we have a status condition, allowing us to one hit KO her Combuskin as well. Now that was incredible. With that, we arrive in Mauville City, the location of our next gym battle. I actually remembered to pick up the Harbor Mail and Slateport this time so we can get the coin case, which I have a feeling we're really gonna need. While grinding up for the gym, Balma ends up evolving into a Loudred, definitely giving us some more bulk and power, and Videl also ends up evolving into a Linoon. Amazing stuff, but I'm not feeling good at all for Watson with his Steel types. However, the game corner might provide the answer that we need. I spend forever grinding away on the slots and eventually come up to about 3600 coins, after which I can just buy some more with the rest of our money to get enough to purchase the Flamethrower TM, which thankfully Loudred can learn. The Mauville Gym is an electric type gym, which is neutral on us, but Magnemites are big problems, although with Flamethrower we can now handle them quite well. It's time for the third gym leader, Watson. He leaves with a Magnemite and I send out Boma. 
He outspeeds us and hits us with Sonic Boom, and then our flamethrower leaves him on a sliver before he uses super potions. He's then able to hit us with Thundershock to about half before a final attack takes him down. Voltor comes out next, and not wanting to take more damage on Bulma, I switch into Videl who gets hit for 20 HP. Tackle does about a third before we then get hit by Spark and paralyzed. This lets him outspeed us on the next turn as we get brought to 16 HP, but we make it through paralysis to hit him once more before I switch into Chi Chi who tanks the Spark and takes him down with Scratch. In comes his final Pokemon, Magneton, and I hit it with Yawn as it goes for Thunder Wave, but our Cherry Berry heals us. I then stall out a bit until he falls asleep, getting paralyzed again in the process, then I switch into Bulma and thankfully he remains asleep until two flamethrowers KO him. A bit nerve-wracking, but we managed. Three badges. In the Rust Derp Tunnel, we can finally use Rock Smash to get the Strength HM. Now normally this isn't a huge deal, but it's actually an amazing move for our team, being 80 power, 100 accuracy, and stab too. I teach it to Bulma, Videl, and Chi Chi for some huge power-ups. On our trek up north, I battle and defeat the Windstrike family with just Videl now that she has Strength, and we get the Macho Brace for winning, which doubles the EVs we get on any Pokemon that holds it. On our way through the Mount Chimney area, I realize that, as ridiculous as it may seem, we now have a way to defeat rock types like Geodude with Flamethrower because at least it's a special attack. Moving ahead to Route 113, we can finally get a new encounter, this time a Spinda. A Pokemon I don't think I've used in a playthrough before. We catch it and nickname it Botamo, and it ends up having a relaxed nature, plus defense and minus speed, which is doable I guess. Further up on Route 114, we can get the Dig TM from the Fossil Maniac House, which should come in handy. Up ahead, our sixth encounter becomes available in the grass, and we have to watch out since there are two possible encounters here, but thankfully we get the one I was hoping for as our first, Zangus. We successfully catch it, and I nickname him Vegeta, who has a hardy neutral nature. In the Meteor Falls, we pick up a crucial item, the Moonstone, which is actually the only one we can get in the entire game since Wild Lunatone only appear in Sapphire, not Ruby. Vegeta then meets his ultimate rival, Saviper. The rivalry between these two is interesting, but it seems that Zangoose comes out on top with just one attack. This thing is powerful, man. Atop Mount Chimney, we encounter Team Magma Leader Maxi, who starts yelling at us about the land and the sea, and I'm just wondering, what the hell do I have to do with any of this? He leads with a Mighty Ina, and I send out our newly caught Zangoose. He does have Intimidate, however, we do have Swords Dance, so I figure we can just kind of cancel out the attack drop quite efficiently. Our first slash didn't KO him though, which means in the end we got hit by Sand Attack twice before taking him down. His Golbat just barely survives too, and after it gets Super Potion, we miss twice in a row and get hit low. I'm forced to switch now, so I send out Botamo and... No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, look at the top of his head! <laughs> Alright, I don't even feel bad about making fun of him, as two wing attacks bring him super low before we barely do any damage. Oof. Here, I send a Hikui, who's able to take him down with Quick Attack after being brought to 15 HP. His final Pokemon is Camerupt, and I'm feeling a bit nervous here, but I switch into Videl knowing he's stuck using Ember, Strength does less than half, then he uses Magnitude, but gets Magnitude 7 so we survive. A switch into Chi Chi is then able to do the job with one more Strength. We next arrive in Loveridge Town, the location of our next gym, and man, this is my dream. No, no not because of that, I'm talking about the Hot Springs of course. Don't judge me. Before the gym, I teach Videl Dig and also attach the Soft Sand item. Let's hope it's enough. The fourth gym leader is Flannery, the Fire-type trainer. Her Slugma is an instant one-hit KO with Dig, which is a great start. Her next Pokemon is a second Slugma, and it does what I feared most by setting up Sunny Day, but it barely survives a Dig. Sun-boosted Flamethrower then does huge damage on us too. I know I can't let her final Pokemon come out while the sun's up, so I switch into Botamo to kind of stall out as she heals. I tried to go for Hypnosis, but Botamo fails again and misses it on the first turn, and then she sets up Light Screen. Thankfully, we put her to sleep on the next turn, and Dizzy Punch gets the job done after two hits after the sun went down. In comes her final Pokemon, Torkoal, and here I sincerely thought we'd be able to live in Overheat, but we don't get the confusion on Dizzy Punch and then get one hit KO'd instantly. What in the world? I double checked the calcs, and apparently there was something like an 8% chance for it to KO. Guess that's what I get for being too lazy to level this thing up right to the cap. However, my plan still sort of worked as now its special attack got lowered from using Overheat so I can send in another female Pokemon Chi Chi so it can't use Attract, and a few strengths get the job done with us being brought to about a third after our berry. After the gym, I remember to pick up the charcoal item from the herb shop nearby to boost our fire moves. Fast forward to our next gym, the Petalburg Gym. 
The trainers are of course neutral against us and... Uh, what could have been? Delcaddy is a very underused Pokemon too. Oh well. The fifth gym leader is none other than our murderer father, Norman, a fellow normal type trainer. Like father, like son, I guess. He leads with a slacking as I lead with Hikui. I go for Growl immediately and he hits us hard with Facade to a half. However, since he has Truant, I can hit him with two more Growls before he hits us again, and this time it does less damage and our Orinberry heals us. On his Truant turn, I now switch into Vegeta and can start loading up on Swords Dance as his attacks are doing very little now. In the end, I get three off and take him down, and in comes his second slacking. I had EV trained Vegeta like crazy in speed, and according to my calcs, we should just outspeed him, and we do, being able to take it and his Vigoroth down. Amazing. Hikui definitely set up a nice sweep for us there. Norman also gives us a fantastic TM for winning, the normal type facade. I immediately teach it to Hikui, our Swellow, for a particular reason. Those of you familiar with the strategy will know why, otherwise prepare yourselves for a little bit later. Since we're not using Slack Off much anymore and we have Citrus Berries available soon, I also teach Chi Chi Bulk Up too. Now that we have Surf, we can make it to the abandoned ship on Route 108, which holds a great TM for us, Ice Beam, which should be helpful later. By helping Watson out at New Mauville, he also gives us the Thunderbolt TM. On Route 119, we encounter Steven again, and this time he asks us if we raise different types of Pokemon or only one type. As a Steel-type trainer, he's definitely taunting us, isn't he? You son of a... Our next destination is a weird one. I decide to go north from Rustboro now that we have Surf up to a strange hidden route, Route 115, where there's a secret area with a patch of grass that holds our next encounter. Guarded by a few powerful Fighting-type trainers, by the way, so I was very careful. Here we can find a Jigglypuff, and thank god we got it instead of the other normal type that shows up here, Swablu, which we wouldn't be able to evolve. After we also found Zangoose on the other route, that's gonna cut Swablu off as an encounter, which, I mean, meh. If it was Altaria, I'd be upset, but this is fine by me. We catch Jigglypuff, and I nickname it Launch, and Launch has a naughty nature, nice, plus attack and minus special defense, which isn't great, but not terrible either. Heading back to Fortree, I nearly lost Chi Chi to a mock punching Breloom on just 4 HP before Hikui luckily handled it. Man oh man, random trainers can be scary. After beating Team Magma Admin Courtney at the Weather Institute, we're actually gifted our next encounter, a cast form. It has a jolly nature plus speed and minus special attack, which is not great, and it's a really weird Pokemon, so I'm gonna box it for now. Now comes the time for the strategy I've been waiting to use forever. Our Swellow has the Guts ability, as I mentioned earlier, which raises its attack power by 50% if it has a status. Plus, our newly learned Facade move doubles to 140 base power with status and gets the same type attack bonus too, making it ridiculously powerful. So, I get poisoned by a Wild Oddish nearby. Let's try it out against Mei. She deserves it after all the hell she's put us through on past runs. She leads with Whalmer and Hikui comes out on our side. However, just in the nick of time I realize we're like right at the level cap. One facade takes it down, but now I have to switch. How unfortunate. Next time, I guess. From here, I'm able to one-hit KO Shroomish with Chi Chi after bulk up, and then a switch into Vegeta has her just use Sand Attack, and we finally get a crit with high crit ratio Slash to take Combuskin out. Unfortunately, we have to talk to Steven again, and he wants to see our true power in battle. Oh great, so now he's taking my copyright too. Interestingly, he sends us in against our next viable encounter, a Kecleon of all things. I catch it and nickname it Goku, and Goku has a jolly nature plus speed and minus special attack, which is actually pretty good for it. Kecleon is a weird Pokemon with terrible base stats, although it has a really cool ability, but I'm gonna box it for the time being. It's time for the Fortree City Gym. Before the gym, I decide to evolve launch using a Moonstone. At the current level cap, this means we are gonna miss out on Body Slam by one level, but I think we need Wigglytuff for this gym leader. Before the battle, I also use our Ice Beam and Thunderbolt TMs on it for some great type coverage. The sixth gym leader is Winona, the flying type trainer. She leads with a Swellow, and I lead with Launch. Because of Double Team, she hits us once with Aerial Ace before we instantly take it out with Thunderbolt. We get hit by a Water Gun next, but as you may have guessed, the same goes for her Pelipper, which is four times weak to Electric. Her Skarmory then hits us to a quarter with Steel Wing before we hit it hard with Thunderbolt, but we get the Paralysis on it, meaning we can now outspeed it on the next turn and take it out with another after our Citrus Berry activates. Her last Pokemon is Altaria, and it hits us with Aerial Ace before we hit it with a four times super effective Ice Beam, which just barely doesn't KO. After a couple Hyper Potions, she then uses Earthquake, but my estimation was correct as we survive on just 10 HP in the red before taking it out. 
Wigglytuff, the Winona Killer. Who would have guessed? I am very careful to avoid Cool Trainer Jell... <laughs> Jellifer. Cool Trainer Jennifer on the next route. Those of you who have seen our past runs will know why. And we arrive at the Safari Zone where we have two potential encounters, either Doduo or Giraffarig. They appear in the same area, so I decide to just go for it and... It ends up being Giraffarig. I throw a Safari Ball, it breaks out, and flees immediately. Oh god. Well, there goes our Safari Zone encounter. Would have been pretty good for some psychic coverage too. Atop Mount Pyre, this old lady who guards the orbs just gives us the red orb in the hopes that we'll help her out. Did you just entrust the most important object in the universe, capable of summoning hellish monsters who can destroy the Earth, to a stranger? We also encounter a trainer who is mourning her skitty, and I join her in crying as we mourn my potential skitty. The skitty that could have been the meta skitty. <laughs> we also pick up the Shadow Ball TM, which I'm thinking will be amazing later on, and. Uh, oh! ah! 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 I broke both my ankles and my spine. You know what? This is all May's fault. It's time to unleash our ultimate strategy. <laughs> Man, this is just disgusting. I can't even watch. I was in a bad state at the time, okay? Both my ankles broken and whatnot. I was going through some stuff. Guts boosted, stab, double power facade for the win. After picking up light screen and reflect TMs from the department store, I make it to the roof to try and fly away, but the game doesn't let me. You know what? Fine. I'll do it myself. Upon arrival in Moss Deep, Steven gives us the Dive HM and lets us know that there are some places that we can't return to the surface. If he dies, he dies. Before the gym, we have an amazing evolution as Bulma finally evolves into a beastly x -Bloud, one of my favorite underrated Pokemon of all time. I also teach the Shadow Ball TM to Videl and use the Light Screen TM on Wigglytuff to help us out. It's time for the 7th Gym Leaders, Tate and Liza, the Psychic Trainers. They engage in a double battle with Solrock and Lunatone, so I send out Videl and Launch. Now my whole plan here was to set up Light Screen with Launch and then start slamming Lunatone with Shadow Ball since it can load up Calm Minds. However, it went for Hypnosis right away and landed on Videl after we hit it once to below half. One more attack would have KO'd it. Oh, that's not good. I do get Light Screen up though, so I'm feeling pretty safe and I switch from Launch into Chi Chi. Both Solrock and Lunatone hit Videl with Psychic down low though, so I'm forced to switch and I send out Vegeta. And on the switch, Lunatone hits him with a Psychic and gets a crit through Light Screen to take him out instantly. Are you kidding me? That is a rough loss. I couldn't believe it. From there though, we're able to wear them down with the help of Launch and Light Screen. Man, that was such an unnecessary crit, but we got the badge at least. Rest in peace, Vegeta, and welcome to the team, Goku. Okay, that's just disrespectful, come on. After the gym, I finally remember to grab the meteorite from Mount Chimney to trade for the return TM at Cosmo's house, which I teach to Goku since I figure he could use the extra power once his friendship is higher. In the Cave of Origin, we can pick up the Earthquake TM before we encounter Groudon and Maxi, who challenges us to battle. Launch is a perfect way to handle his Mighty Ina since Intimidate doesn't affect our special attack, and although Swagger is a hassle, we did get a freeze on it so we could take it down in a few Ice Beams. His Crobat then brings us low before Ice Beam brings it below half, and because our Citrus Berry helps us out, I decide to keep going against it and take it down in a couple more after he potions, being brought to just 18 HP in the process. His final Pokemon is Camerupt, and I accidentally looked at his wrong team online and thought his Camerupt only had Magnitude and Ember, but it turns out to have Rock Slide, and I switched in Hikui, but thankfully we survive it. From there, I switch in Chi-Chi, who I forgot to teach Earthquake ahead of time, but two strengths do the job since he just used Amnesia on one turn. With that, it's time for the eighth and final gym in Sutopolis. Because I suck at the puzzles, we fell down, and I knew we could use the training anyway, so I used Goku against the trainers, and I kid you not, he soloed every last one of them since I had raised his friendship quite high. Absolutely unreal. Wouldn't expect a Kecleon to do so much damage. The 8th gym leader is Wallace, the water type gym leader, so it's a neutral type against us, but he always tends to be a problem for us in these runs, so I'm being careful. 
He leaves with a love disc and I send a Bulma. This love disc can be super annoying with Water Pulse, Sweet Kiss, and Attract, but I made sure to send out a Pokemon he couldn't use the latter on at least. As he hits us with Water Pulse, I start loading up on Howl, and amazingly we didn't get confused at all, even though I put a Person Berry on which would have healed us anyway. Whoops. Love disc goes down in one strength, and in comes Whiskash. I hit it with strength down to the red, and then he uses Amnesia before healing, then two more do the job. Celio comes in next, and it turns out to be a one-hit with strength, and the same goes for his Seeking as well. Bulma is on an absolute rampage. His final Pokemon is Milotic, which hits us with Ice Beam down to a third, and then Strength brings him into the red before he heals. Knowing Heat Potion, I use Strength again, but now we're within KO range, so I switch into Goku, who tanks Water Pulse, and our ability makes us the Water type, so we now resist his moves and can take him down with Return. Unreal. Probably the best Wallace battle I've ever had. Bulma and Goku just pulled through. Toward the end of Victory Road, we have a battle with Wally, who has become really strong. However, I made sure to level up closer to the Elite 4 level cap, so launch KO's Altaria with a 4 times super effective Ice Beam, Delcaddy with 2 Ice Beams, and then for Magneton, I switch into Goku, so Color Change makes us the Electric type, but we're only able to bring it to the red with Brick Break, and Confusion combined with Tri-Attack brings us too low, so I'm forced to switch into Bulma, who handles it with Flamethrower. This works out well as he sends in Rosalia next, which also goes down in one attack. His final Pokemon is Gardevoir, and Psychic does not too much on us, and we can take it down with Strength for the win. With that and our perilous journey behind us, we arrive at our final destination, Ariana Grande City, the location of the famed Pokemon League. I do tons of preparation like grinding, fulfilling the rest of our EVs, picking up any items I forgot to grab like the Sharp Beak, getting other TMs like Ice Beam on Exploud, and Linoon also learned a very special move at level 53. Let's do this. The first Elite Four member is Sydney, the Dark-type trainer. He leads with a Mighty Ina, and I lead with Launch to avoid Intimidate. He hits us with Crunch though, and gets the special defense drop, but I use Light Screen so I guess it evens out. Ice Beam then brings him low, but he gets another takedown on us to bring us below half before we take him out. His Cacturn then hits us with Needle Arm, but Ice Beam is a one-hit KO there with the Never Melt Ice attached. Sharpedo comes out next, and tried to go for a Swagger, but missed, and Thunderbolt takes him out immediately. He sends out Absol next, so I switch in Goku. He went for Swords Dance, which is a bit scary, but then he just uses it again, so Goku with the Black Belt attached takes him out in one hit. His final Pokemon is a Shiftry, which was a bit of a hassle with Double Team and Potions, but eventually we got a high roll for the KO. A solid start. The next Elite Four member is Phoebe, and yes, she looks like a terrifying threat, with us not being able to use Stab Attacks on her Pokemon at all. However, I decide to unleash my ultimate plan by sending out Videl, who just learned none other than Belly Drum to massively increase our attack at the cost of half our health. She used Confuse Ray on us though, but I had attached a Person Berry so now we can outspeed and take down every single one of her Pokemon with max power super effective Shadow Ball, which don't forget is physical in this gen. Who would have thought a normal type would perform so well against a Ghost Team? The third Elite Four member is Glacia, the Ice-type trainer, and I spent a lot of time thinking about how we could approach this battle as her bulk and typing is a bit troublesome for us. She leads with a Glalie, so I send out Goku. She uses Hail, and I decide to go for Rock Tomb here. It does over half, but the main point is it lowers her speed, so on the next turn I can outspeed and take it down with Brick Break. A solid lead. Celio comes out next, and Brick Break brings her to a quarter, and then she uses Surf, and another Brick Break takes her down. The next Celio gets hit below half, but then uses a Tract on us, but thankfully we break through to KO it. She sends out her second Glalie next, which resets the hail, and not wanting to miss Rock Tomb at this range, I decide it's safer to Brick Break and allow our Citrus Berry to activate, which triggers a full restore from her before we can take it down with about a third health remaining. Her final Pokemon is a beastly Wall Rain, and I need to switch, so I send out Launch again, who gets hit hard below half with Blizzard, and it freezes, but we thaw out immediately, get the Light Screen off, and our Berry activates, allowing us to survive another and hit it hard to right about half with Thunderbolt before its Berry activates. I don't want to risk a crit from here, so I switch into Bulma, who brings it to what must be 1 HP after a few strengths, and then our light screen goes down as she heals. I decide to stay in, and she goes for Body Slam, and gets a crit, but we survive on just 8 HP to bring it low. From here, I send in Chi Chi to tank a Surf to about half, and take it down with Strength. Whew, a messy battle, but we managed to scrape by. The final Elite Four member is Drake, the Dragon Master. He starts with Shelgon, and I lead with our trusty launch. I know he usually likes to go for Protect on the first turn, and Dragon moves are all special in this game, so I go for Light Screen, and the prediction works so I can take it down with a Never Melt Ice boosted Ice Beam. 
Next up is Altaria, which just goes for Dragon Dance, so 4 times super effective Ice Beam pulverizes it. He next sends out Flygon, which starts the Sandstorm before going down as well, and his second Flygon just hit us with Flamethrower for minimal damage before it suffers the same fate. Launch is tearing through his team, so I figure why stop now as his beastly Salamence comes in and our light screen wears off. He smashes us with Dragon Claw to below half before Ice Beam returns the favor and ends the battle. Wow. Launch is a monster. It's time, the final battle. The champion is of course Steven Stone, the Steel-type trainer. I spent so long theorycrafting for this battle it's not even funny, and I was realizing that every single scenario I played out in my head, we lose. His team is just so crazy with so much more power, bulk, and resistance to our stab moves. There's one way that could work, but it's extremely risky depending on what order he sends his Pokémon out in. In the end, I get us set up, use our last few rare candies, and go for it. He leads with a Skarmory, as I lead with Launch, our only reliable way of handling it. She hits us with Steel Wing for about a fifth, and then I hit it with Flamethrower quite low. Steel Wing then brings us to below half before we can take it out. If I'm honest, I thought he would use Toxic on us, which is why I had attached a Petcha Berry, but I guess it's pretty useless now. Now here's the key. He sent out Armaldo next, my greatest fear, as I thought he sent out Claydol since neither have super effective moves against us. I think the AI registered that we had Ice Beam though, and sent out something we don't have a super effective move against. We've seen this kind of thing with the AI kind of unfairly knowing when you switch and using Pursuit for instance. However, I realize I have to stick with my strategy even though it's riskier now, there's just no turning back. We get hit by Ancient Power, survive in the red, and thankfully it doesn't get the Omni Boost. I taught Launch Reflect just for this battle so I could use that before switching into the key to all of this Chi Chi. Thankfully he just used Slash instead of Ancient Power on the switch, so now I can use Bulk Up to raise our attack and defense. He goes for Ancient Power again, but no boost, and I use Bulk Up again which triggers him using Water Pulse instead, as I feared, but amazingly no confusion on the next two turns so our plan might work after all. Our berry heals us as Reflect goes down, and now I unleash an Earthquake, and it brings it only into the red. Oh no. It goes for Water Pulse, but no confusion, Steven heals it, and then Earthquake brings it back down before we can hit it again. Oh man, that was so incredibly risky, but Chi Chi pulled through. With the massive buffs, we now smash the Claydol with Strength, and take out the Agron with 4 times super effective Earthquake, but in comes the Cradilly. I know we can't one hit KO this thing, but hey, it's worth getting the damage off at this point, so I hit it hard with Earthquake, it goes for Giga Drain, and Chi Chi miraculously survives on 3 HP to take it out. Oh my god! I sincerely thought we were kind of okay anyway since we have Flamethrower and whatnot in the background, although Metagross could have certainly taken out quite a few of our Pokémon with ease, but now we can outspeed it with super effective Earthquake and take it out as well. That feels so good after Steven's Metagross has smashed us in previous runs. We did it. We beat a Pokémon Ruby Hardcore Nuzlocke with only normal types, and what an amazing run that was. Normal types in Gen 3 are straight up incredible. Way better than I found them to be in Gen 4 and really fun to use too. If you enjoyed the run, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button as it really helps a lot and grows our community. A huge thanks to my YouTube members and patrons who make these videos possible. If you'd like to support and get your name up here, the links are also down below. If you enjoy, drop a like down below to help the video out and leave a comment letting me know what kind of run we should do next and I'll see you guys for our next challenge video.